Good morning and uh, Happy New Year. It's a great joy and privilege to share with you in fellowship around God's Word and uh, in the first Sunday service for 2023. Let's uh, <clears throat> pause for prayer as uh, we turn our focus to the Word of God. Heavenly Father, as we commence this new calendar year, we want to c commence it by focusing our attention upon you and your word and the work of your word in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Help us to listen, help us to understand, help us above all to be doers of your word that we might glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I did send a outline. I don't know whether you guys can uh, access it online because it looks like you don't print bulletins. Um, so I'm preaching today on Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 to 30, the passage that uh, Ing read for us. And I've given as a sermon title, Christ for All of Life. And there are three points. The first is that Christ in our life means love. Um, the second... Christ in our life means joy. And then the last one, uh, a practical point, living worthily for Christ. As we look back on the past year, 2022, I'm sure many of us can testify that it's been a year full of challenges. Certainly in my own life, I had some unexpected challenges. But nonetheless, as we looked back on the year that is gone, I'm sure that we can also testify that we were not alone uh, because of God's hand on our lives and God's hand and protection of our loved ones. But I want to begin by challenging us to consider where is our life headed in this new year, 2023? In John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said he, he came that we... Disciples of Jesus, believers in Jesus, followers of Jesus might have life and have it in all its abundance. And so we could say to know Christ is to have life. But in John 1 John 5 verse 12, it says very clearly that those who don't have Christ don't have life in the real sense. So for them it's no Christ, N-O Christ, no life in our life. I've given us a sermon title for today, Christ for All of Life. This happens to be uh, the motto of Christ College. And it's a clever motto because it's putting Christ first in all parts of our lives. If you cast your minds back a few Sundays when Pastor Darwin preached his last sermon, he actually used a passage from Philippians chapter 2. And on that occasion, he uh, encouraged and urged all of you to grow together in unity. And in these past two Sundays, Matt Tan has preached on the meaning and the significance of Christmas. And I want to sort of follow on uh, from those sermons. And that's why I've chosen the passage from Philippians. Because Philippians, in chapter 3 of Philippians, uh, we have the uh, testimony of Paul where he looks back at his past but he doesn't live in the past. He doesn't dwell in the past. He puts the past behind because he strains forward, uh, pressing towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. But linking in with the two sermons that Matt Tan preached about Christmas, every time you and I reflect on the Incarnation, the fact that the eternal Son of God became a human being, it reminds us that human life is important, that human life has meaning, that human life has significance and purpose. And we need to bear this in mind as we commence a new calendar year. Paul wrote the epistle to the Philippians when he was in prison. It wasn't, he wasn't in prison by choice. Trumped-up charges were... Uh, put against him when he was in Jerusalem, he appealed to Caesar, and he was in prison waiting to front up to Caesar and have his, have his um, uh, situation dealt with. 
He himself thought that his time in prison wouldn't be too long, that he might be released so that he could continue his ministry. And just as we heard from the children's talk, only God knows the future. And so Paul was prepared for all possibilities. He thought that he would be released and would continue his ministry, but he was also prepared for the fact that he might not be released and that he might be put to death if the judgment went against him because he realized God had a purpose, God had a plan. God was in charge and he wanted to live every day to please God. He wanted every day to live uh, counting for Christ. In many of Paul's epistles, and we see this in the epistle to Philippians, we see the phrase, in Christ. It's to, to, to demonstrate that a believer's life is in Christ. And um, you might remember that before Jesus departed from his disciples, uh, he taught them in John 15 about the vine and the branches, that we get our life by being connected in Jesus. And in verse 4 of John 15, Jesus said, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So our sermon title today is Christ for All of Life. It's a way of expressing what it means to live in Christ. And we're going to look at two aspects of living in Christ. First of all, it means love, and then secondly, uh, it means uh, joy. At Christmas, we remembered that Jesus was called Emmanuel, which means God with us. But where is Christ now? He's ascended after his resurrection, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. But he, he, he lives in us through the Holy Spirit. And as we celebrated Christmas... Love and joy are two key themes that we focus on every Christmas. And so for Christ in our life, it means love. For Christ in our life, it also means joy. And if true love and true joy is in our lives and overflows from our lives, it's one way that demonstrates that Christ lives in us through the Holy Spirit. Just consider the Apostle Paul. He was in prison, but he wasn't complaining because he knew that God was in control. And as he wrote in the passage that Ing read for us, the Philippian Christians were encouraged and they were growing spiritually by looking at Paul's example in prison. His life continued to be characterized by love and joy. He showed love to his Roman captors. He continued to show love to to the Philippian Christians, and particularly love to those in the Philippian church who sought to take the opportunity while Paul was in prison to do things in rivalry to Paul, to do ministry that Paul couldn't do now because he was in prison. And in verse 9, which is before our passage, Paul says, and this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. That your love may abound more and more. In other words, love can grow. And it also means that love involves knowledge and depth of insight. It's a conscious act of the will. It's not just some emotional feeling. Paul would have had many emotions going through his mind when he was in prison. But he continued to love those in the jail, and the Philippians. Paul writes about some of the Philippian Christians who were trying to take the opportunity uh, to do things their way while Paul was in prison. He, he refers to them in verse 16 in these ways, in these words, the latter do say out of love. Paul is saying he's so grateful that while he's in prison, the Philippians continued to preach the gospel. And some do out of love, knowing that I'm here for the defense of the gospel, but others, because of their rivalry. And so, love in our lives, because we live in Christ, 
should also be expressed in love for those who are without Christ. No Christ, and no Christ, no life, and no life. And as we share the gospel, it must be done in love. In another epistle of Paul's, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, Paul gives this remarkable testimony. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And the wording is quite uh, marked here. Christ's love compels us. Christ's love drives us on. Christ's love pushes us on in our spiritual pilgrimage. And this, this phrase has a double-barreled meaning. Christ's love for us. Paul, on one occasion, said he was the worst of all sinners. But God's grace and God's love through Christ touched him. And he could never, ever forget that. And in that sense, Christ's love for him gives him the motivation to keep on living for Christ and ministering for Christ. But Christ's love also has uh, another uh, understanding to it. It is our love for Christ. So Paul speaks on the one hand of Christ's love for him, but at the same time he speaks about his love for Christ. And he was willing to go anywhere for Christ. He was willing to do anything for Christ. And so as we commence this new calendar year, we're looking at the Apostle Paul, he's in prison, he's looking at his uncertain future, but he knows the future is in God's hands. And the first challenge I want to bring to all of us is, have we ourselves personally experienced Christ's love in our lives? It's a lot different from having been brought up in a so-called Christian family and being sent to Sunday school and youth uh, fellowship and so on, and learning about the Bible, learning about Christ. That's not the same as Christ's love actually making an impact on our lives. Have you personally experienced Christ's love? And if you haven't, this year, 2023, is the time for you to personally experience it. But the other side that Paul emphasizes for us, our love for Christ. Is our love for Christ growing? Are we willing to do anything for Christ, give up some things for Christ, take on some things for Christ? So that's our first point. Christ in our life means love. The second point is Christ in our life means joy. And uh, Paul speaks at the joy, uh, uh, at the fruit of the ministry of the Philippians while he's in prison. You can read about that in verses 13 to the first part of verse 18. And he he expresses joy at the prayer of others for him. And he writes about this in, in the second part of uh, verse 18 to, and verse 19. And he, ex he expresses joy at the spiritual growth of fellow believers, verse 25, and joy in Christ overflowing in his lives, that's verse 26. As I said, joy is one of the uh, major themes uh, of, of the Christmas message. And we all, we're all familiar with the Christmas carol, joy to the world... The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Let every heart prepare him room is another way of saying living in Christ. Because if we live in Christ, not only is there love, Christ's love in our lives, but there's joy, the joy that God gives in our lives. Verse 18, Paul is in prison. The Philippians, uh, they're from Macedonia, they were from a pagan background, and they were willing to turn their backs on pagan worship to embrace the true one and living God and become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only did they believe, they were proclaiming the gospel to others who were still in spiritual darkness. And in verse 18, Paul's so happy. He says, Christ is preached, and because of this I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. Because as Christ is preached, men and women who respond come out of spiritual darkness and into the love and joy that God offers. Paul was in prison. And he was a realist. Because he speaks about suffering. Up to this point in his life, he had already had many experiences of suffering and indeed persecution and stoning. 
for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he writes, for it, is, it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. And that's not a message many people like to hear. Some people like the gospel message that offers prosperity, good health, happy family, good career. And we should pray for such things. But they are not given to us automatically as a promise from God. God gives us love. God gives us joy. But he also reminds us it is granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. And if you haven't yet understood it, joy is not the same as happiness. People could be happy because finally they're allowed to travel overseas. Finally they're able to do something they've not been able to do for the past two or so years. People are happy for various things, but that's not the same as joy. You could be in prison and be joyful. You could be experiencing ill health, discomfort and pain, but still have joy because joy is given by the Lord. Now, we began by looking back at the year that is past 2022. Who knows what 2023 will be for us? It may still be a year of challenge. But as you and I live in Christ and grow spiritually, we can face these challenges with joy. And you may know that in the Epistle of James, chapter 1, verse 3, it contains this exhortation which sort of sounds contradictory. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of any kind. Paul says, it's been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. He's not saying that we will not have trials. He's not saying that God will intervene at every moment and rescue us from trial. But he is saying, God is with us. And we can be joyful through the different experiences God wants us to go through in his wisdom. And the last point we want to look at very briefly is living worthily for Christ. We've talked about living in Christ. It really means putting Christ at the top of our lives. Verse 27, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And also, stand firm in one spirit contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. And then verses 28 to 30, um, Paul urges us, the Philippians, and therefore he urges us, Christians throughout the centuries, to be prepared to face opposition and even suffer for Christ. You and I make decisions all the time. Decisions with our money, decisions with our property, decisions with our car, decisions with our family, education of our children. Um, we're making decisions all the time. But where is Christ when we make such decisions? Where is the glory of God when we make such decisions? And for many people, the default uh, attitude is to go with the flow, to do what most people do. And the reason why most people do what most people do is if you don't do what most people do, you stand out. So when Jesus was on the cross, he didn't do what the others did. When people are crucified, they yell and scream and they, the, only, the only part of their body they can control is their mouth and they, they, they spit out all these curses on their captors. What did Jesus do? He prayed for them. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. So living in Christ, living worthily for Christ, means that we're going to be courageously standing out from this world, from this fallen world, and we will resolve to live according to God's standards. 
If God's if God word says this is a certain way we should live, it's going to take courage to live that way. If God's word says a certain thing is displeasing to him and we refuse to do that thing which is displeasing to him, but everyone else does it, that's courage. We're going to stand out from the others. And living worthily for Christ means resolutely holding on to, to the pure gospel without compromising it or watering it down. Now, we live in the world where fake news has been around for so long and it's, you know, the message that's acceptable is the message that is preached. But the message we have is the truth. That's what Christmas is about. God in Christ became a human being that we might know what is truth. And so living worthily for Christ also means resolutely holding on to the pure gospel without compromising it or watering it down. And then living worthily for Christ means resolving never to be ashamed of the name of Christ. Paul was in prison. His captors knew why he was in prison. And he was willing to suffer for the name of Christ. So that's a challenge for you and me. We don't live via autopilot. But we live consciously, when we make each decision, live consciously seeking to live worthily for Christ. I want to conclude uh, with Paul's testimony uh, in, in declaration, verse 21. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's his pers perspective on human life. Until he was converted as an adult person, he thought he had everything. He had a family background, he had education, he had a, a, a position uh, in the Jewish uh, society, in the Jewish religious society. He had everything. But look at chapter 3. Paul was willing to give all of that up and regard it as garbage to know Christ and to live as Christ's disciple. For me to live is Christ. And it's only possible for you and me to say that, for me to live with Christ, if the love of Christ has truly touched our lives. Christ's love for us and our love for Christ. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Because on death, whenever that happens, and we believe for Paul it happens sooner than what he had thought. Death is gain because it means the end of God's uh, ministry for us on this earth. And for some people, God wants an extended time of ministry, and for others, compared to others, not so extended. It's in God's wisdom. And Paul was open to either option. And in the Bible passage that Ing read for us, he knew that if God gave him more time, he could be, be doing more ministry and building up the Philippian Christians more. Do you have any regrets about last year? Bad decisions you made? Things you should have done but didn't do? Well, irrespective of when God calls us home, and I don't want to be alarmist here, but in the past few months I've been involved in quite a few funerals and um, connected with many churches. And in fact, I'm waiting for a phone call any day now to help out in, in a funeral for someone who's who's wasting away. Irrespective of when God calls us home, you and I should have no regrets about how we live our lives if we have the attitude of Paul. Paul lived in Christ, he knew the love of Christ, he knew the joy of Christ, and he was willing to live worthily for Christ. Please join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we commence this new calendar year, we pray that you'll be with us that we might truly live worthily of the name of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.